Hello and welcome. I've recently on eBay purchased this LC meter. It's called the LC200A and I just wanted to take it apart, take a quick look at uh, what is inside and show you what I got. First the um, supplies that came with it is a AC-DC adapter. It outputs 5 volts uh, DC at 1 amp. It has a US American style socket here some crocodile clips and the meter. There was supposed to be a SMD tweezer in the package but it just wasn't shipped apparently so I've contacted the seller and I'm going to get that I hope. I'm first going to give you a quick look at how the LC meter works and how it's constructed and then I'm going to take it apart. First thing you will notice is that on the back here it says AC 9 volts 500 milliamps which I find a bit confusing because the power supply is a 5 volt DC power supply so I am guessing this is wrong. Also here it says AC DC to which is obviously the power switch and it's this line to what is the USB connector here. The USB I think is just used to transmit the measured values to the PC. It, I don't think it can supply power through that. And it says auto power off um, here but I think this is wrong too because this is a power switch. So this is just what I noticed other than that the build quality seems reasonable for I think 40 euros in the whole package. Also um, the AC-DC adapter is not um, surprisingly light, you know, the AC-DC adapters where they leave off a couple of components. This one actually seems reasonable, but I'm also going to take that apart since I can't use that connector in Germany anyways. Okay, I've connected my lab power supply to the meter because I can't use the AC-DC adapter at the moment. The outer part of the plug is ground and the inner part is plus 5 volts. So when we turn it on you'll see that it uh, greets us with a firmware version and then immediately goes into measuring mode. You see that it currently has an error of about 74 picofarads. If I press this zero button it will say calculating and if it says OK and I release it it will have zeroed out the error. So, so currently it's at 0.15 picofarad error. Usually you do that after you connect your leads and everything to cancel out the measurement error that is caused by the leads. So the first thing that I will want to do is I have some capacitors that uh, I know the accuracy of and I'm going to measure them and see how the meter performs. One thing you'll immediately notice is that because of the banana plugs here you're unable to connect probes which are uh, shielded for uh, safety purposes. So I'll have to rely on actually my oldest probes on the set, uh, which are about 10 to 15 years old I think. And when plugging those in it kind of feels flimsy a bit, it wiggles around. Um, actually not too nice but I think it will work. So I have a batch of 0805 capacitors they are rated at plus minus five percent tolerance and uh, this here I think is 22 picofarads I'm going to measure those so I'm after connecting the leads obviously it displays a uh, error this is caused by the capacitance of the leads itself I'm zeroing that out right now okay and now I'm doing a measurement So it's 25 picofarads. I'm going to measure another one. Uh, it's kind of hard. I am currently stabbing through the plastic insulation here. 24 picofarads. 24 picofarads. Also 24 picofarads. So this actually uh, is not too far off. I'm going to try it the 10 picofarad one. Again since I moved the cable I'm going to zero out the error again. And I'm going to measure a 10 picofarad capacitor here. This is 14 pico 
Oh well, actually I just moved the cable again. So I'm going to redo that measurement. Actually quite hard to do because every tiny move this is actually why I, I need the SMD clippers because it's ne next impossible to do a precision measure uh, measuring uh, with these clips here because every time you move those you'll see there is a difference of at least three four picofarads so this is 10.7 12.5 13.5 yeah, but you'll see as soon as I move it just a millimeter, it's not connected right now. There is a 3 picofarad error. So if I zero that out, I'm pretty much spot on at 9.5. But measuring uh, low capacitance, 9.9 .9 picofarads, is quite hard using such a long wire. And this is actually the reason why you need the SMD tweezers. Here's a batch of 100 picofarad capacitors and you'll see it's very very much spot on 97 97 this was 98 so that is actually surprisingly good for the low price of the meter I'm going to measure some larger capacitors now so for this measurement I'm going to enter high capacitance mode. This is a Nikicon uh, 4700 microfarad which I earlier measured with a different instrument to have about 4.9 millifarad. So I'm expecting to see around that value. And it says 5.01 millifarad so this is pretty good. To do some measurement of inductivities, I have this fast run inductivity, which is 68 micro henries, and it's rated at a tolerance of plus minus 5%. So I'm switching to, um, to capacitance mode, and the difference between zeroing in the, in, I'm sorry, I'm switching to inductivity mode. Um, in capacitance mode, obviously you zero with open leads. In inductivity mode, you need to zero with a short circuit, but you'll also see that there is not much stray inductivity here. So I still zero that out. And remember, this is a 68 micro Henry inductivity, and it comes out at 70 micro Henrys. So again, measuring this is a 10 micro Henry inductivity. It says 11 micro henries. So this is uh, pretty much spot on here. This is a 22 milli henry inductivity. Measures out at 22.4. So it actually is pretty good. One thing that uh, you can see there is this funk button here. If I press that, it will show me a frequency. So what I'm guessing is that internally it's the L is, um, in, uh, is in parallel to a known capacitance as generating a um, oscillation and this oscillation is then measured and converted to a capacitance or corresponding inductivity depending on what we are measuring right now but we'll see that as soon as we take the meter apart okay I first want to have a look at this ACDC power supply and see how they built it. You'll notice there are no screws so I'll have to use brute force to get it open. So after a bit of gentle violence, this device came open and I mean not surprisingly it's not the best build quality, however it by far isn't the worst that I've seen. It's based on the TNY266IC and a precision shunt regulator which is a TL431 here and, a, and the TO92. 
and uh, here's um, some rectifier uh, consisting of one and four thousand something. I can't actually see the last digit. I'm not going to bother soldering one of them out. You see that here for the output there is actually a um, plug, but it has been soldered at the bottom right here. Pretty crappy soldering job, I must say, but uh, I'll redo that later on. Here you'll see a optocoupler, so the secondary is uh, optically isolated from the primary. And those two here are not uh, for fuses, but uh, apparently this whole design is also a snap-in for a different casing. But in this device they just soldered those on here. Also pretty crappy soldering job. But I'm going to rework that thing and put it in a nice casing anyway so I can have a German power plug on here. So now the more interesting part, uh, the LC meter itself. I'm surprised what uh, we are going to find there. So now that it's open, it really doesn't make uh, that bad of a first impression. Uh, we see on the silk print it's the LC200A and the date code is 2011-0716. Um, up here is a display uh, from the silk print and the signals. I'm guessing this is a standard HD447 compatible um, LCD display. I'm going to take the whole circuit out now and we can see what it's comprised of. So when the device is open up there is really not much special. There is a 8-bit microcontroller here. It's an STM8S105, um, 105K4, so it's actually a pretty decent microcontroller um, with 16 kilobytes of flash. Here is a 16 megahertz crystal and then there is just some circuitry which comprises the oscillator probably and uh, maybe clock dividers also, uh, which the STM then measures. Here there is a rather large inductivity and a large capacitance. Um, I believe that whichever um, you want to measure, the other one is uh, switched in parallel to that. It's kind of surprising they don't seem to have any uh, real precision here this capacitor is rated at plus minus five percent I'd have expected a plus minus one percent component here then again depending on the measurement and how it's done it might be sufficient to just have relative measurements and absolute accuracy is probably or is maybe not that important but other than that there's not really much of a surprise here on the back side there is nothing the whole PCB layout seems to be uh, very well done. The soldering is also okay. There's lots of wires connecting uh, the top and bottom ground layer. Or basically the, uh, uh, the ground connections on, on top uh, with the ground plane on bottom. And one thing that did surprise me is since it says AC on the outside I would have expected that there is a kind of rectifier in here. There is not. Um, there is a diode here. I'm not sure if that's just against um, putting in the batteries in the wrong way, um, but I wouldn't recommend applying AC to that circuit. I think this is a error in the um, plastic casing. Here this uh, little guy seems to be a JTEC programming pin header or something like that. I'm not really sure and over here there is a buzzer which luckily for me 
has not been soldered in because I really don't know why an LC meter should, you know, do beeps all the time. I really don't get it. So no surprise here, I'm going to uh, put it back together. So another piece of information that I just by accident found out, if you hold the zero button pressed, it will say calculating and then OK, which is just temporary calibration. But if you hold it pr um, pressed for a little bit longer, it will actually say data saved. And then if I turn it off, it will have the calibration data of um, just now stored in the EEPROM and will immediately zero that out. So if you have a known lead, um, you can basically save the calibration data by holding the zero button pressed. And actually, contrary to what I said in the beginning, the USB connector here does not output any data. It's only used for power supply. So you can, uh, you can basically use your USB connector to supply power to it, but it won't be recognized as any device, so you can't transmit any measurement data. So all in all, I'm pretty happy with the device. I think I would have picked it up again for 40 euros. That's actually reasonable um, because all the casing and everything is included and the display. Um, I think I would pick it up again, definitely. I'm going to leave the name of the eBay seller that I got it from and the article number on the description in the description below. And thanks for watching. Have a nice day. Bye.